Hi, I'm Matthew Miller. I am the Fedora project leader, and I've given a talk like this at DevConf many times, not every year, but lots of the years. Um, it's really sad to not be there in person. I suppose I shouldn't go on too much about that. Let's celebrate the happiness. I'm wearing my um, 10 years of Fedora shirt like I usually do for presentations. So there we go. Um, that that's the same at least. Um, I'm going to try and go through this quickly and get to Q&A fast because I don't like being in a vacuum talking to my slides. Um, there are some polls over in the poll section. Go ahead and um, do do the polls. That would be fun. Um, and here we go with the talk. Um, wait, I thought there was a slide before this. Okay, here we go. Yeah. So I'm going to talk about um, what's going on. I'm going to talk about where we're going next. Um, I'm going to show you some graphs because that's an important part of my State of Fedora talk. And I'm going to talk a little bit about why you should get involved. But the last session covered that a lot, so I'll go quickly there and then we'll go to questions. Um, yeah, so the first thing, how things are going. Uh, the, when when this year started with the pandemic, I mean last year, um, it, you know, DevConf was one of the, this is one of the last things that happened. And then um, everything got locked down and it was looking to be a pretty bleak year and I wasn't expecting very much, but it turned out that we were actually awesome in Fedora. Congratulations, everybody who's part of the project and um, to everybody who's around it as well. Um, I chose this quote um, from a um, vlogger uh, about Fedora that I really liked because in some of the times in my talk on Fedora, I actually had like burning dumpsters in the slides. Like I felt like things were not going well, but here's a great talk about a great quote about how we are on fire in a good way. And I'm really proud of this. It's awesome. And that's really translated to a lot of Linux enthusiast community really um, rallying behind Fedora um, in an awesome way, which is um, great to see for a distribution that is, you know, getting to be 20 years old to see all of this enthusiasm from, you know, um, people who look like they might not have even been born when Fedora was started. So cool to see that um, here. And it wasn't just um, just, you know, uh, various enthusiasts, some of the really big podcasts as well. Um, the 2020 Tuxies had Fedora as the uh, the listener's choice on Linux Unplugged. And um, in the Destination Linux podcast, they also um, picked us, I think three of the four people picked um, it as the best uh, distro for 2020. So um, that was very cool. Uh, we are really uh, seeing a lot of popularity and enthusiasm. Uh, and I think in general, um, one of the quotes from this, this um, show was, Fedora, I feel like they love what they're doing. Um, I don't know why love is capitalized there, but uh, I think that, and that's, that's, it's nice that that comes through. I really love what I'm doing. I hope that you as part of Fedora do. And if you are interested in Fedora, I hope you find something to love as well. I think um, it's really nice that that is coming through in what people are seeing as well. Um, again, it seemed like it was going to be a hard year. Um, we really missed having the flock conference in person, but we turned out to have a very awesome virtual conference using the same hop in platform um, with uh, Nest with Fedora instead of Flock to Fedora. Here's some screenshots from people that Marie all put together. Uh, that was really fun and successful. Um, we did some fun things like play Minecraft. Here's an incredible Fedora logo built out of, I assume, wool. I, I'm not sure. Um, that was the landing spot. Uh, it was really cool. Uh, and we did uh, some VR meetups. We've been doing a Fedora social hour every week. Um, look on discussion.fedoraproject.org to come join us. Everybody is welcome. You don't have to be um, a really like highly technical contributor. In fact, just you know, come chat, hang out with the, the main rule of the social hour is no talking about work. I mean, you can talk about your day job, but not Fedora work. Um, and sometimes we do it in VR like this, but mostly we just do a video call and just chat and things. Uh, of course, um, big news this last year was uh, Fedora being shipped on Lenovo laptops. We hope to do um, a lot more of this thing, this and um, should be coming out on new models. And this time, hopefully with worldwide launch or close to worldwide launch when they come out or as close as we can get. Um, and um, again, across more than just the one model this time, we'll see. Um, that was a fun thing we did this last year. Um, and um, the last session was about the community outreach revamp. This is what's going on for the 
the coming year. This is one of our big efforts. The whole last session was about this, so I won't talk too much about it, but um, this is a really awesome objective for us and important for Fedora because while we really feel like we've had the, the technical side of the project is going very well, um, the part of the, the mind share part of the project, uh, there's a lot of great effort there, but it's not been very well connected. So um, the Mindshare team and the ambassadors team are working on kind of connecting all these things together so that things like the websites are connected to the out, the ambassadors who are talking about Fedora and trying to you know, encourage people to use Fedora and telling, you know, telling our stories connected into the, into the marketing and all of these things all together. Um, I think it's, this is a really good effort and it's going to, um, uh, really pay off in the next year. So, um, also, of course, um, on the engineering side, Fedora 34 is coming out soon. There's a poll about whether you're already on it. Um, this is uh, the wallpaper. It's beautiful. Thanks to Mo Duffy for this. I love it. It is nice and peaceful, and I think it's kind of a good uh, reflection of where we want to get away um, in the in the COVID times. A nice, calm place to relax. This is the uh, night view of it. There's a day view as well, so it's one of the night day wallpapers. It's very nice. Um, and also this year, also Mo did a lot of work on this. Uh, we are finally ready to launch the new Fedora logo. Here are some mock-ups of it in place. Um, we can talk in more detail about why this new logo, but we wanted something that kind of addressed some of the issues we were having with it functionally, while also um, kind of reflecting back to the heritage of the existing logo and not looking like something completely new. So um, this is this is ready to go and we're going to come up with a plan for rolling that out over time. Um, I think it looks really great. Uh, also, um, we have an awesome intern, Ella, working on a Fedora zine. This is not the Fedora magazine, which is our basically our user facing blog, but actually a literal paper zine that will have a bunch of art and things from the Fedora community in this. This will be um, shipped to some of you, and we're going to have it for handouts at conferences and things once we have conferences again, um, again, to show kind of what Fedora is all about and have something other than, you know, CDs to hand out at, at booths, something that kind of shows why Fedora is particularly interesting. It's, it's gorgeous. Um, okay. Uh, I promise stats and graphs, of course. Here is one of them. This is the Fedora Contributors by Week graph. Uh, I won't go too much into the details here, but basically the solid lines are people who are uh, continuously active in Fedora and that the higher blue line is like drive-by contributions. Um, if you look at the last year, we can actually see that this solid contributions has kind of a nice trend up, which I'm glad to see. I've been kind of worried about the flat line we had for a while there, but I think we can kind of see a, a positive growing trend there that I hope we can continue. I still would like to see the uh, green and yellow lines. Those are the newer, newest contributors and the ones who've been around for a year or so. I'd like to see those go up more and more, but I can, but I think it's nice that we have that nice and consistent. And the blue, uh, the drive-bys are still down, but that's actually, I think, for a specific reason, which is that the wiki is now harder to edit to prevent spam. So that's a lot of the drive-bys previously were that. Um, and we're going to actually add to these statistics to measure some other things like Ask Fedora, which isn't counted right now, which I think will actually uh, make those things go up a little bit more. But um, yes, um, what I, I want to see from the outreach uh, group is for these lines to be going definitely up. It's going to be cool. Um, okay, um, Ask Fedora, I talked about this is our forum for uh, user questions. It's based around the discourse forum software. Um, I showed the stats for this at, at Nest, and uh, the basic thing here is, look, they're growing and growing even more. Um, so that's really good to see with a lot of, um, lot of engagement and a lot of um, discussion going on there and a lot of solved problems. Okay, uh, now the dinosaurs part, I'm going to show some of the stats from Fedora mirrors and um, the dinosaur is a warning that some of these stats, these stats are observational. They're like archaeology. We don't do any invasive metrics, any sort of telemetry kind of thing. So basically, we're just looking at the record and trying to discern things from that. So um, there may be errors. Uh, the first thing here, um, this is the traditional thing I call it the ages of Fedora, where I just kind of block things together. The, the blocks are kind of arbitrary lumps. Um, the important thing here is, uh, yeah, uh, growth in the, the number of systems out there continues to go at a pretty solid clip up and to the right. Uh, so that's awesome to see. Um, you know, the spikes are up and down of just, um, again, the dinosaurs and just um, 
changes from time of year and so on, but in general growth. Um, this is using what we call the old counting methodology. That's just one number of IP addresses seen every day in the mirror network. Uh, and uh, Fedora Linux is going up, but it's also important. Um, one of our other outputs is Apple extra packages for enterprise Linux that run on RHEL and on CentOS and on other RHEL derived distributions. Um, we count those as well. And uh, this is an order of magnitude more use than Fedora Linux. Uh, Fedora Linux is uh, very important for its own right, but uh, one of the huge impacts as a community we have is making the software available to people running these enterprise distributions, which is also a very cool thing. Um, and those, that really continues to grow as well. Um, we should have put an only, only for Fedora is eternal slide. That'll be for a different talk about the things. But yes, uh, Fedora, Fedora is eternal, and it is the source from all of these uh, other other packages. Um, so I also have um, a new stats thing, and um, I'm, these slides are not pretty because I was actually like working on making the data gathering work, and I was up last night still working on it. So I never got around to the making it pretty part. But we have a new counting mechanism, which uses uh, um, every once a week, the DNF um, updates, when it's looking for software updates, tells uh, tells that that machine should be counted that week. This helps us get around some networking problems that made it hard to tell uh, whether system there are multiple systems at you know one house or one 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 you know a thousand systems at one company or just one system, or if one person is moving around to like you know this isn't happening this year, but in general someone moving around to five different coffee shops and connecting it from every place would show up five times in the old stats. So this gets around that um, and gives us a more accurate count, again, without doing anything that's personally identifiable or anything that's user tracking. So uh, this is still observational, but more accurate. And it also lets us um, divide up the data in more interesting ways. Uh, this slide basically just shows that uh, our, our, the system is working and uh, you know for our, our newer releases we're getting data from it uh, I think in the next you know year or so we'll be able to do a little more interesting things with this but one more interesting thing I can do is this uh, count actually tells it, it it sends a bucket of whether it is a brand new installed system installed a week ago a month ago six months ago or older than that so pretty broad buckets so we can't really narrow it down to specific systems but can give us an idea of usage patterns and we can actually use this to tell the difference between systems that are just installed and then become permanently installed systems which is actually the red ones on the graph labeled one um, those are systems where somebody installed a system last week and then this week we still see um, the number of the number of systems that are older than a week go up as opposed to the purple ones which are systems number of systems that were installed or we saw them one time but um, they don't contribute to a growing a persistent installed base uh, so we can actually uh, see these ephemeral systems and distinguish between them which is kind of cool because uh, a lot of systems being used for ci and build systems and tests um, you know are, are different from somebody who is actually you know running a fedora operating system day to day and it's nice to be able to sort those out and we can actually see that here um, this one again i apologize for it not being pretty uh, we can actually use this to break down what variant people are using this doesn't necessarily tell your desktop environment because you could install fedora workstation and switch to kde but um it, it gives you a an overall view of uh, of w w how people installed it at least and a general idea of operating environment you can see that about half of the systems are using workstation but we've got a pretty big chunk of people using cloud that's the gray here and then uh the generic ones which is not uh, labeled as any addition um, then fedora server is again uh, very popular and then uh, here um, again in the green is containers so uh, fedora and containers i know uh, for a lot of desktop users containers seem skeptical but um, it really is an important use for the fedora operating system so that's cool and then um, kde is also a significant chunk of our desktop user base and then some of the other um, you know, mate um, xfce and a little bit of cinnamon there as well are also all showing up there um, i know there's a new i3 spin it'll be interesting to see how many people are excited by tiling and um, if we can get get that onto the graph um, there there are others as well but they don't get to the um, 
this is a thousand dots. None of them are big enough to, to rate a dot here yet. Um, again, a lot of those are probably installed also by you know as generic or by installing a workstation and then switching to another environment. Um, but anyways, I can use that thing I was talking about in ephemeral systems. So here, this is a graph of the same thing, but only of systems that just show up for one week and then go away. So there's actually a surprising amount of workstation here. Um, I don't know, test installs or people who are building. I, I'm not actually sure why this is quite so large. Um, possibly actually uh, when you're doing a live install that might show up here um not sure um but you can see here that cloud and container and server are the you know, predominant overall which again makes sense um and you can see a lot of um uh, yeah uh, th those kind of test systems going and again this is an important use for fedora as people test the leading edge of software um and then this is Okay, this is the, see, I didn't talk fast enough. This is the opposite. Um, this is the persistent systems, and it kind of, again, makes sense. Uh, we've got more more workstation systems. Uh, generic, that's uh, not done with an addition. These, a lot of these might be systems that were installed in Fedora 20 and upgraded ever since and never got addition labeling on them. Um, again, makes sense that those are long lasting, but we also have a lot of long lasting cloud systems, which is kind of cool as well. Uh, cloud server, and again, KD and all that. All right, and that was the end. Um, let's Let's take some questions. All right, there have been no questions uh, dropped into the Q&A yet, so I will encourage folks to do that. Um, so there was a little comment about the, the new logo and everyone seems to love it, but um, can you quickly explain some of the technical reasons why the current logo is hard to work with? Yeah, uh, so one of the big things is there is no good way to make this be a single color logo and you can, here it is on the screen, um, a single color and still retain the elements of the of the logo that are important. So um, we've seen some pretty like the font awesome version of it is horrific. Um, sometimes people get rid of the infinity. Sometimes they just make it an F um, and it's to kind of destroy the symbolism of the logo to render it in. in um, two colors. So we wanted something that could actually be done in two colors because there's a lot of cases where that's important. Um, it also is kind of off center a little bit, which makes it hard to work with. Um, this doesn't show the logo type, but the, the the font we used for that was not an open source font. So now it is based around an open source font. Um, I think uh, the TM symbol in there, it doesn't actually have to be in the logo and it's kind of annoying to have it there all the time. It was um, with that. Um, and of course, one of the other things is that it looks too much like the logo of a prominent social media company, and we are tired of those jokes. So we wanted to move away from that a little bit. Uh, we we were there first. This is this logo predates uh, Facebook using an F. Oh, I said the name. I wasn't going to, but uh, the social media company using using that F. Um, but uh, we we didn't make a big deal of it at the time, so uh, we, we decided it'd be easier for us to just move to something that is more or us, uh, and there, there are another number of other things as well. A question, an anonymous question in the chat. I'm planning to check out the video you talked about, et cetera, but for someone who hasn't tried Fedora, how would you make me try it? Yeah, uh, so um, if you're a Linux enthusiast, it's easy. It's the best best one, so that's simple. Uh, but if, if you have, if you're, um, are running a you know different operating system. I think the exciting thing about Fedora is that although it is technically good, the thing that's important about it is it's an operating system that doesn't belong to a company. Red Hat sponsors this, but it belongs to us as people. And that includes everybody who is a Fedora user, not just the Fedora developers, contributors. Uh, this is a thing that we make together as a community and share. It is free for everybody and it's built through all of our effort. So it is our thing and you can be part of it thing that is ours and part of this community just by running this operating system. And I think that's really the compelling reason to do it. Um, it is something that is worth your time because it is something that um, it is, it, it's like, you know, owning a house versus renting. Sometimes it's a hassle, but it's nice to have something that is your own thing that you can, you know, if you need to put holes in the walls, you can put holes in the wall. If you want to repaint, you can repaint, you can do things with it. And in the end, it's something that just, you know, is belongs to you. And that's, um, uh, 
really what's important about open source Linux on the desktop, I think. And, you know, other All right, so the questions are pouring them. in, so we'll try and do this rapid fire. Uh, could someone like me who has a test system mess up your single week metrics? For example, instead of installing a new desktop environment on my test machine, I just reinstall just to see how it works out of the box. I mean, if you do that every week, you will show up as an ephemeral system. Um, and I guess that's fine because that's what you probably are. And, it, you know, um, well, may, maybe that's what a lot of those ephemeral desktop system counts actually are. Um, but if you do it once, like, you know, I don't think there are enough people doing that to really matter. And again, it's not about individual user tracking. It's about, you know, aggregate trends. So I'm not worried. How is Fedora CoreOS doing? What do you see as the future for it? Oh, that's a super thing to mention here. Um, these this new stats do not yet count Fedora CoreOS, Fedora IoT, or Silverblue, which use a different mechanism for updates. Uh, we're working on that. Um, those will be included. Um, Fedora CoreOS seems to be doing really well as a community. There's a lot of energy and liveliness around it. Uh, one of the things we're working on is getting that more integrated into the whole Fedora processes overall, and we hope that that will be uh, labeled an official Fedora edition in Fedora 35. Um, Are there plans to get Fedora on more laptops, uh, either from Lenovo or from other manufacturers? Yeah, uh, definitely from Lenovo. I. I hope that it is three models this time around. I can't uh, can't speak to the details, um, and we would love other manufacturers as well. I don't have anything I can talk about there at this point. Um, well, Slimbook in in Europe also ships with Fedora Workstation on systems as well. So there is at least one other smaller one, and there are some uh, other smaller distributors who may be able to install it as well. But um, no ex huge big deals uh, that I can talk about at this point. Uh, is there a mobile version for Fedora as well? There is an effort to make a mobile version. Um, it's really hard because um, the hardware changes so much and it is so locked down. Um, this is a market that Microsoft decided they couldn't um, justify playing in. It's a it's a really cutthroat and everything changes so much and the hardware vendors um, are not interested in open. Um, so, uh, uh, there's effort, but it's. Uh, I don't think it's going to be. You're going to see a headline thing um, for Fedora, even though it's a it's a really cool project for people um, to hack on and work on. And if you're interested in that, um, definitely there's a mobile uh, special interest group that you should check out and see see what we can get going. All right. Uh, so I'll combine two questions because they're kind of related. What's the status of Fedora ARM, and are there any formal efforts to get Fedora running on the new Apple Silicon? Um, there is a, there's some informal efforts to do it. Um, I think that's going to be a little bit hard. Apple's pro provided some information. Um, I think we're probably never going to run as well as you know, their integrated operating system. That's their entire point. I hope to see um, some competitive ARM laptops coming out soon. That would be that would be fun. Um, Fedora is actually um, I, I didn't show this graph. Um, you know, most people are running um, Fedora on x86. Um, one of the significant places I see it, I see a lot of Fedora Cloud running on ARM. I assume that is in the, the AWS Graviton things. That's pretty cool to see. Um, but so yeah, so ARCH64 is something that actually, um, even without IoT being counted, like um, shows up visibly on our graphs, which is exciting because we've never had a non-Intel architecture. Even though we've supported them for a very long time, they're always kind of lost in the noise. Like again, on the thousand thousand squares waffle chart, not not rating a square. Um, so arm arm rates some squares. So that's cool. Um, and I think that's going to um, be more and more significant. The people who are working on arm in Fedora are amazing and have been uh, slogging along, you know, uh, as unsung heroes for a long time. And I think they're it's you know, probably uh, about about time to get sung. Hit one last question. Um, an opinion I ran across a few times recently is that Fedora is an enterprise Linux and we should should and can run Ubuntu on servers and Arch on workstations. What do you have to say about that? That's <laughs> weird, I guess is what I have to say about that. Um, now, uh, 
you know, uh, if you want an enterprise Linux, um, there is Red Hat Enterprise Linux, which you can run, you know, um, now you can run in production for up to 16 systems. Um, or if you want to be uh, something that is under a, uh, uh, where you can get the the binaries uh, just uh, by downloading them. The CentOS stream is available. Like those are those are your better choices um, than um, those other distros that were mentioned. Um, that are that are, you know is again things that come from the work of Fedora directly. Um, but you could also run Fedora for those things if you wanted to. But Fedora is also awesome as an individual end user desktop system. A lot of people who run RHEL in production or CentOS Linux or CentOS Stream in production run Fedora for testing or run Fedora on their desktop systems. Um, so yeah, um, great, great for the enterprise, but um, super awesome for individuals as well. Um, I, I would I would call that um, a, really a silly point of view. Don't, don't listen All to right, those Well, people. with that, uh, we are out of time. Uh, wait, I okay. want to end on a positive note. I don't want to end on calling something silly. Um, Give me something else. What's the else. most exciting feature <laughs> coming in 30, Fedora 34? Oh. Uh, well, I'm I'm pretty excited about the new GNOME desktop user interface. I think that's going to be, uh, I think there's a lot. Of, it's interesting how much research has gone into developing the new UI. And um, I think there's going to be a little bit of bumps because every change is, is you know, something as significant as this can, um, you know, will rearrange somebody's workflow. But I think it is nice and elegant and uh, is a step forward for the GNOME 3 UI. So I think that's that's one of the most exciting things I think in this room on the desktop at least. Well, thank you, Matthew. Um, um, I, there were a few more questions in the Q&A, so um, you can find Matthew in the Discord session uh, to continue, continue questions, or I'm sure you could find his email address somewhere out there on the internet. Um, <laughs> Yeah, or go go to discussion.fedoraproject.org. That's that that'll be better than emailing me. We can have a we can have a public public discussion. Um, yes, and I miss having a drink with people, um, as commented in there. I, we, sh we should be going to the bar that does not exist um, right after this, but oh well, only only in my mind. Um, I will see you over on the Discord um, chat, not video. I think because that's enough video for one morning.